Welcome to YedidiaShofet.net And of course Shabbat Shalom Welcome to this week's Parsha Parsha of the week Parsha Chukat So then this week's Parsha You have a lot of beautiful things You have the rock that's being beaten You have the red heifer You have Miriam who passes You have the certain type of snake In which that can heal people And some other stories But one very interesting point That's mentioned in this Parsha Is the passing of one of the greatest peacemakers in history, Aharon HaKohen, Aharon the High Priest. Now who was he? In Pirkei Avot, in the Ethics of the Fathers, he was known as the Rodef HaShalom. He was known as the one who pursues peace. Not only for him to just look after Shalom, not just for him to look after making peace with people, but for him to cause others to look for peace among themselves. He was the one that was able to bring a shalom bayit. He was the one that was able to bring a happiness, a harmony among everyone in, people, in their houses, between a husband and wife. And in this week's parsha, when his passing came, it said what? It said, Vayifku, it called the Nazar. It said everyone mourned the loss. It wasn't just the children, it wasn't just the men, it was everyone. Because everyone felt the love that he had. There's two types of teachers. There's a teacher that works with strength, that rebukes the student again and again. There's another teacher that loves the student, but not just loves him to rebuke him, but loves him with such care. And in the end, when the student, when he's about to do something wrong, what does he do? He thinks twice because he's telling himself that how could I do something like that? You know, this man loves me so much. He loves everything I do. And I don't want to disappoint him. That was Aharon HaKohen. That was the influence and impact that he had on everyone in Cloud Israel. That's why they miss him so much. And his biggest impact was to show the idea of Shalom Bayit, of harmony in everyone in the house. And there's a beautiful story of understanding of what a Rodef HaShalom is. What is one who pursues peace that takes all of his honor, throws it aside, and says that my priority is Shalom Bayit. One time there was a fellow, he came from uh, Bavel, which was Babylonia, and he came to Eretz Yisrael, and he found the love of his life. Now, the only thing was, the both of the husband and wife, they had different languages. So when they tried to communicate, some words were mistaken here and there. And one time there was a very interesting incident. The husband came home one day and said, Please, honey, can you please cook me two lentils? So the wife, you know, he, she's thinking, Oh, he means literally two lentils. But really, in his terminology, when you say two lentils, that means a little bit. So she actually cooked him two lentils. He comes home and, says, and looks in the pot and sees two lentils. Did, uh, did I do something wrong? Is there something I did? So what happens? He tells her, Please, honey, can you make me a sa'a? Which means, can you make me a bigger amount? That's in his language. But a sa'a is also a huge amount in the terminology in which where she is from. So she ended up making a ginormous amount of food. And he's thinking, what is she doing to me? Is she playing with me? Did I do something wrong? I'm, I'm curious. The next thing, this is an easy one. Honey, please bring me a butzina. What's a butzina? Well, according to him, it's a watermelon. According to her... She comes back and brings a lamp. That's it. He lost it. He's, a, he's thinking that she just wants to annoy him. He says, take this butina and slam it over the bava. What is a bava? A bava, according to his uh, terminology, is a doorpost. According to her ter terminology, it is the name of the superior judge of the Jewish courts. And, he, and she went to the court, took this butina, which is the lamp, takes it and slams it over the head, of the chief court justice, Bava, and Bava looks up, a little dazed obviously, and asks her, what are you doing? So she says, listen, my husband said I should slam it on a Bava. So he says, if you're doing your husband's doings, then may God grant you two righteous kids, and you, the both of you should be happy and healthy forever. He disregarded the entire idea of his own kavod, his own honor. But he pursued the peace. He pursued the fact of keep the harmony between the husband and wife. That's one of the most important things. 
we know in the Gemara and the Talmud that even there were certain periods of time where the name of God, name of Hashem, would be erased for the sake of Shalom Bayit. So just imagine the power of keeping this Rodef HaShalom. Imagine the power of making the peace between one another. That was the special forte of Aharon HaKohen. That's why it was such a huge loss, such a great loss. That's why everyone missed him. Everyone loved him. Why? Because he loved everyone. That is the idea for us to understand in order to pursue peace. What do we have to do? We have to love. And by loving, and when you love, you care. And by caring and loving, you'll be able to pursue others towards peace. That is a message that Aharon HaKohen gave. That was his legacy. And that is exactly who we have to try to aspire to be. And God willing, I want to wish you a beautiful Shabbat. A Shabbat Shalom. We don't just say Shabbat Shalom for no reason, but it's known that on Fridays the Satan is uh, very known to cause a lot of problems because people are getting ready for Shabbat, so people begin to scream. We have to keep it the Shalom. We have to keep the peace. We have to remember that no, you shouldn't get angry. You're gonna have a beautiful Shabbat. Okay, a little things are a little tight, but God willingly, it's gonna be a peaceful, beautiful Shabbat, and that's what I want to wish you and your family. And, and God willingly, I'll see you next week for week five. Thank you and goodbye.